Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the first tutorial of the series Special Effects for Games in Unity and we are going to see how to create effects like the ones you are seeing and there will be plenty more that you can find in the description and in my channel. By the way, everything is available in my Patreon in case you are interested to have access to these effects. I'm using Unity 5.5 and today we are going to see how to create this electric orb which is great to get started with particle systems. So let's see how we can do it. The effects we create are done with several particle systems, so it's always good to create an empty game object, which is going to be called particle system electric orb. Next thing we do is add our first particle system with right click and rename it to circle. As you can see, it's not facing up, so let's rotate it minus 90 degrees in the X, like this. We can also move the empty game object in the Y, a value of 3. Let's create a folder called Particle System, and inside it, create one called something like Electric Orb. This Particle System is going to be the circle that we have seen. And I created this circle in Photoshop, but you can also download it if you Google for Circle PNG. But in case you want to know how it's done, in Photoshop I simply created a new file with 1000 by 1000 using the Lips tool, and by holding Alt and Shift I proportionally created the circle. The fill is empty and the stroke is white, with around 15 pixels. Don't worry about the color, because we can control it in Unity. I double click in the circle layer to open the layer style and in the outer glow I choose a white with a spread of 16 and 100 pixels for the size. I added the black background and export it in PNG. And that's how it's done. Now that we have this image, we need a material, so let's create a new one with the right click mouse and rename it to circle. And in this drop down menu where it says shader, we have a section called Particles and we want to select the Additive option. We can drag and drop the image of the circle to this slot and now drop the material on top of the circle, like this. And as you can see, this immediately takes effect and the particle system starts emitting the circle. Ok, that's great, but let's change a few things. The first one is, we don't want 1000 particles in the max particles, because the tree will do the work and we don't want it to move, so let's set the start speed to 0. And we also don't want any shape, uncheck this. The circles are now in the center, which is what we want. Now the time the particles leave are controlled by the start lifetime option, and we can set it to 4 seconds. Now it means that every circle will leave 4 seconds. This duration parameter is to control how much time the particle system will be emitting. Since this is looping, it will control the time between each loop. And for now I'm gonna set it to 2. If we want to change the size, we can change it here in the start size. I'm gonna put 5. Let's just say that in the emission, the rate over time is 1. Which means that one particle will be emitted every second. But if we want the size to change with time, we can use this parameter called size over lifetime, which lets us control the size of the particles from the moment they are born until they die. And we want this linear growth, and this left handle controls the size at which they are born. Ok, if you look closely, you can see that the circles simply disappear and appear again, in a very abrupt way and we can smooth the way they are born and they die with the color of a lifetime option. Just turn it on, press the square and in this window we can see keys on the top and on the bottom. The ones in the top control the opacity and the ones in the bottom controls the color. We want to add one in the middle and we can decrease the opacity of the ones in the extremity, like this. And now they are much smoother as you can see let me just show you that in the emission, if you increase the rate over time to 2, there will be 2 circles every 2 seconds, which will increase the quantity, in case you are interested. You can also control the color of our circle in the start color parameter. 
and you can change the opacity with this alpha value. Now let's create another particle system and we can call it particles. If we go to the shape parameter, we can see that we have a cone shape particle system and we want to change this to sphere. This way it will meet in every direction. The particles are moving too fast, so let's decrease the start speed. Now in the start size, let's also change it and we are going to use the random between two constants that you can access in this right arrow. And for now, we can change the minimum to 0 0.1 and the maximum to 0 0.5. Let's also choose random between two constants for the start speed and change it to 0 0.1 between 1.2. And by the way, you may have noticed that if you zoom in, the circle will shrink. And this happens because we need to go to the render separator down here and set the max particle size to at least 3. Ok, now back to our particles. Let's also say that the start lifetime is random between two constants. Something like 2 for the minimum and 5 for the maximum. At least for now, because I'm gonna make small adjustments and I will show you the end result. Now let's change the color, like this. The particles are disappearing abruptly. So let's again change the color over lifetime. Turn it on, press this square and do the same we did for the circles. Add a new key by pressing here and decrease the alpha value of the others. We also need to change the size of our lifetime. This time we choose the last graph which will ease in and ease out the born and the death of the particles. If we want more particles, we can change it in the rate over time of the emission separator. I'm gonna put 50 for now. And this needs a material and a PNG image. I created this one in Photoshop. It's really simple, but for the sake of this tutorial, you can Google for point of light PNG. And you will have plenty of options to play with. And after you have chosen and downloaded your image, we want to import it to Unity. Create a new material, call it particles of beam light or something similar and in shader select particles and choose additive. And now I'm gonna use the image that I already had and drop on top of the material. You can do the same with your image and then drag and drop the material to the particles. And now they look a little bit better. Let's just make sure that they are born with different rotations of each other. And for that we can use the start rotation and choose randomize between two constants and it's going to be between 0 degrees and 360 degrees like this let's add even more randomness in the way they move because now they are only moving from the center of the sphere to outside in a straight line and with this parameter called velocity over lifetime we are going to make sure that they move with more randomness and we can choose random between two constants which will allow us to insert a minimum and a maximum value in the x, y and z axis and we say it's between minus one and one in the three values like this and this will make the particles much more natural and much more random now the real magic happens when we turn on noise and the trails like this the noise is what is giving the distortion and the swirls and the trail is pretty self-explanatory. Now in the noise we have the strength option and if we increase the value positively or negatively we get this crazy beautiful mass effect and we want something like 2 in strength and 1.5 in frequency and that should be enough. You can play with the values and see what you like and we have to move on to the next particle system that you can create and rename to something like electric beam. Rotate it minus 90 degrees in the X and decrease the particles to 1 for now and we don't want it to move so we set the start speed to 0. We are going to turn off shape, we don't need it since this is going to be in the center of our orb. Let's create a new material called beam center or something similar. Change the shader to particle additive. Let's drag and drop the same image we have used for a little particle and drop the material on top of the electric beam. Now we can see that it's too small. 
So let's select random between two constants and it's going to be between 2 and 5. Let's also create more particles and increase the max particles to 16. And in an emission, the rate over time will be something like one particle every second. Also change the start rotation to between 0 and 360. And we do the same we did with the color over lifetime. The beginning and the end are transparent like this. We also change the size over lifetime to a linear graph. And the next thing is to turn on rotation over lifetime and make it slower or faster depending on what you want. Now you can see all the particle systems working together by selecting them. Now I'm gonna show you something that it was made available in Unity 5.5 which is the light option. And we need to create a light. We can choose a point light. Decrease the range to 4, rename it to something like beam light and save it as a prefab by dragging and dropping in the folder we have created. Let's select the beam light particle system and let's turn on light, which as you can see as an input for a light and we are going to drag and drop the light we have just created. We don't see no light at the beginning because we need to set the duration to 1. And down here you can control if the light has the same color as the particle or not. And it doesn't make any difference for now because the particle system and the light have a white color. Let me just change the prefab light to blue and go to circle particle system, copy this color with the right click, paste it to electric beam. Ok cool, now we see that it has taken an effect and if we switch between the particle system and the light color we can see that both are taking effect and we can control the maximum light, I'm going to decrease it to 2 or 3 because this uses some performance and be careful with it. Now we are able to control the intensity and the range also and that's it for the light. Moving on to the next and the last particle system which is going to be called smoke outside. The first thing we do is change the shape to sphere because we want the smoke to emit in every direction and since this is moving too fast we are going to decrease the start speed to 0.5. Next thing is set the max particles to around 50 and in emission we can increase the rate over time to maybe 25. Now let's go to Google and type smoke PNG and download something similar to this. Import to Unity, create a new material called smoke outside. Select particles additive. Drop the image to the material and drag the material on top of the smoke outside. Let's adjust the radius of the circle. And now we are going to make the start speed, the start lifetime, the start size and the start rotation between two constants like this. You can copy the values. We also want to change the start color to random between two colors. And make sure that they are transparent like these colors. Otherwise the smoke is too present. Let's do the same thing we did to the other particle system and change the color over lifetime. Also change the size over lifetime like this and turn on rotation over lifetime. Let's just set the max particle size in the render to 3. And we are pretty much done. We just need to go to the shape and set the sphere to emit from the shell. This way the smoke only comes out from the boundaries of the sphere. And now this is a matter of finding the right values until we get to something like this. And for me, after adjusting a little bit the particle systems, I end up with these values. You can pause the video and copy if you want. What is important is that you have learned what each parameter we have played with does. And uh, that's basically it guys. If you want to have access to these effects and more, you can support me in my Patreon and I will give you a link where you can download your rewards. And thanks a lot for watching guys, subscribe for weekly game development videos and see you in the next tutorial.